invite our director, Professor Shin Hyo Jung. He will give us an opening address. Please give him a big applause. Thank you. 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 Challenges always lead us to new worlds. However, challenge is limited to the young people. Thus, it is said that challenge is a privilege of young people. I like to challenge and try to challenge all the time, which means I am young, like you. Since I am young, of course, all of you are young. Thus, you are qualified for challenges. Challenge will lead you to the new worlds you want, where you should be. Today, we'll have a very meaningful conference, which is held by student yourself, for yourself, and of yourself. This is a very challenge everybody wants, because today's challenge will lead you to the way to make your dream come true. I would like to. Thank you, and to respect all the effort you have shown for today's challenge. Also, I would like to give my warmest thanks to my staff, faculty members. God will bless all of you. Thank you all. Now let us start the group talk. Let's welcome our the first group of the discussion. Okay, let's start. Okay, first group is on impacts of climate change on agricultural production and mitigation measures for livelihood of farmers. Uh, actually, I screened all your dis discussion papers, so I classified some parts. First one is overview, second one is the literature review, third one is case study. Fourth, mitigation measures, and summary and conclusion. So, first part, overview. Nano, you can start. Yeah, to save our time, just to please make a presentation less than eight minutes, please. Our, hello, everyone. Our topic is impact of climate change on agricultural production and um, mitigation measures for livelihood of farmers. Climate change is a global threat to the food and nutrition security of the world. As greenhouse gas emissions in the atmosphere uh, are increasing, the temperature is rising due to the greenhouse effect. There is climate-driven extremes, uh, drought, heat waves, erratic and intense rail food, uh, patterns, storms, food, um, and emerging insect pests uh, have adversely affected in livelihood of the farmers. Future climatic predation showed a significant increase in temperature the, and erratic rainfall uh, with high intens uh, intensity while variability exists in climatic patterns for climate uh, extremes prediction. Agricultural production is under threat due to climate change food, uh, ins insecure regions, Food insecure regions, uh, especially in uh, developing countries, which is uh, um, agricultural products play a significant role in their GDP. At the same time, six, more than 60 percentage of their population live in rural areas and only engage in agriculture. There is no need to optim optimize the climate smart and resilient agricultural practices and technology for uh, sustainable productivity. Flowing opportunities such as alerting sowing time and planting uh, density of crops, crop rotation with legumes, um, agroforestry, mixed livestock systems, climate resilient plants, livestock and fish trees, farming of uh, aggressive uh, livestock, only warning system and detention support systems, carbon uh, sequestration, climate, water, energy and soil smart technologies and promotion of biodiversity. 
Flowing opportunities uh, such as alerting sowing time and planting density of crops, crop rotation with legumes, uh, agroforestry, mixed livestock systems, climate resilient plants, livestock and fish breeds, farming, monographic livestock, early warning systems and decision support systems, carbon sequestration, climate, water, energy and soil smart technologies and promotion of biodiversity have the potential to reduce negative effects of climate change. Most efficient climate change technologies are those uh, which either provide nutrition, or water, soil, uh, or support soil structure. Uh, in similar to West Africa, some technologies name, uh, named some half moon uh, stone bands and Zion, uh, especially uh, found suitable for maintaining food production and securing smallholder farmers. Uh, farmers' perceptions of climate change threat and severity have the most important motivational factor in voluntary mitigation. However, the adaptation depends on the availability of related information. Moreover, there will be a reduction in the number of people exposed to water streets with mitigation strategies, but uh, <coughs> the remaining people will need adaptation strategies due to the exposure to increase its stress. <coughs> the usage of traditional management systems and agroecological management systems, namely biodiversification, soil management and water harvesting can help farmers adopt climate resilient technologies. These management practices uh, uh, ensure increased carbon uh, sequestration, increases soil health, increases soil quality and reduces soil erosion leading to resilient soil and cropping systems, ultimately ensuring food security during climate change. These education and inventions, uh, inventions which focus on uh, local, tangible and actionable aspects could be monitored by individual behavior as the most successful in providing climate change education for ecological development. The main adaptation uh, methods of mitigation can be broadly classified into resource um, conservation technologies, cropping system technologies, and socio-economic or policy inventions. Uh, small and marginal farmers are not able to cope with climate change due to less awareness, which makes them more uh, susceptible to losses. And farmers of Africa, some African countries are also very vulnerable to climate change due to financial implication, lack of management strategies. Globally and particularly in developing nations, uh, variability in climatic patterns due to increased anthropogenetic activity become clear. But uh, some examples uh, in Asia may face many problems because of changing climate, particularly in South Asian countries due to greater population, geographical location and developed technologies, uh, the increased seasonal te temperature would affect agricultural productivity adversely. Crop growth model with the assistance of climatic economic models are helpful tools to predict climate, climate change Im impacts um, and formulate adaptation strategies to respond to adverse effects of climate change. So, sustainable productivity under climate smart and resilient agriculture would be achieved by developing adaptation and mitiga mitigation strategies. Okay, thank you everyone. Thank you. Hello, my name is Shipson Naja. I'm going to uh, explain something about climate change, their impact and mitigation measures for livelihood of farmers. So what is climate change? Climate change is a big issue in this uh, world and uh, uh, this is phenomena of increasing the atmospheric temperature due to emission of uh, greenhouse gas due to human uh, activities or maybe from natural uh, natural. So the gases like methane, carbon dioxide, nitrogen oxides are the important greenhouse gases whose emissions cause increase in atmospheric temperature leading to global warming due to human activities. Climate change is one of the important issues worldwide uh, and has great impact on agriculture. 
Mitigation measures need to be adopted by farmers to address and overcome impacts of climate change on agricultural production uh, is required nowadays. So what are the means of uh, greenhouse gases? The greenhouse gases are the main factors to increase the global temperature. They block the transmission of infrared radiation coming from sun, uh, the sun to go back out of atmosphere and traps the heat, uh, making atmosphere very hot and warm and increase the atmospheric temperature. The following greenhouse gases are released from different sources uh, like methane. Uh, it is uh, the main sources of emission of methane gas are uh, rice farming, uh, land and livestock. Most of methane emission come from paddy field, 91%, livestock 7% uh, and burning of agricultural waste is uh, 2%. So buffalo and cattle contribute about 80% of the global uh, methane emission from domestic livestock annually. So uh, if we talk about the carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide is primarily increased due to deforestation, burning of woods and agricultural wastes and come from industrial gases. Forest is the sink of carbon dioxide but due to rapid cutting of forest reduces the absorption of carbon dioxide produced by human and animals exhale. Uh, during respiration. The increased global population also enhanced the accumulation of carbon dioxide in atmosphere and could not be absorbed by forest because of excess from the limit. Uh, another is nitrous oxide. So nitrous oxide is released uh, into atmosphere through denitrification and diffusion processes. Denitrification is the process that converts nitrate to nitrous uh, gas which, is, which further uh, under oxidation uh, converted into nitrous oxide. So thus removing bioavailable bio, uh, nitrogen and returning it to the atmosphere. Use of nitrogen-based fertilizer in agriculture field is the reason behind the emission of nitrous oxide into atmosphere. One third of applied nitrogen is uh, only absorbed by standing agriculture crops and rest of nitrogen is absorbed in soil through microbial activities and in, uh, in dry condition some of them is kept to atmosphere through denitrification process and change into nitrous gas which further converted into nitrous oxide through oxidation process. So now the impact of climate change on agriculture production. The increased temperature due to climate change and global warming increases transpiration. Uh, transpiration is the process uh, of water loss by uh, plants and the respiration of agriculture crops So and also increase uh, incidence of crop diseases and pests which ultimately negatively affect agricultural productivity leads leading to uh, adverse impact on food security of global population. So the main, uh, main impacts are um, the drought condition, higher atmospheric temperature due to climate change and global warming cause rapid evaporation of soil moisture from agricultural field. It increases cost of agriculture production due to frequent irrigation required. Another is incidence of disease and pest. Higher temperature enhances breeding of pathogen and insect pest which ultimately makes agriculture crop vulnerable uh, to attack, of, uh, attack from disease and pest. It makes farmers to more use pesticides obviously increase cost of production. At the same time, presence of higher pesticidal residues in agricultural commodities create environmental and uh, human uh, health hazard issues. Another is unfavorable climatic condition uh, for proper growth and uh, development of agriculture crops. The change in climatic factors like temperature, relative humidity has adversely effect on favorable climatic uh, condition for proper growth and development of crops. Sudden change in climatic factors uh, could not meet optimum environmental condition which shifts uh, uh, agriculture crops biologically and geographically to upward north uh, to meet optimum condition for proper growth and development. Another is reduction in agriculture land. The rise in temperature enhances melting of many glaciers and increases uh, sea level which causes the submergence of coastal areas into the sea. The coastal lands are well known for agriculture crops like uh, coconut, rubber, uh, some rice varieties and other crops uh, especially grown in saline soil and so it decreases uh, some agriculture parts of uh, agriculture lands for growing these crops. Another is effect on livestock. 
So rise in temperature increases disease and pest to add to attack on livestock production. Insects like ticks, mites and flies are vectors of many viruses and many livestock related diseases. So it also hampers live, uh, livestock weight gain, uh, dairy production and feed conversion ratio of livestock. Now finally, uh, mitigation measures for livelihood of uh, farmers. So what, what are the, some measures uh, that must be adopted by farmers for their uh, livelihood to grow agriculture crops? So these are the main uh, growing cover, cover crops uh, uh, like cow pea, pigeon pea and some mulching we can do so to reduce uh, soil moisture loss. Another is site specific and precise farming to reduce exploitation of available resources. Another is zero tillage and minimum tillage to prevent soil erosion and to promote carbon sequestration. Another use of adaptive uh, crops tolerant to drought, uh, drought uh, disease, pest, water logging and flood conditions. Uh, another is crop rotation and diversification to cope with disease and pest attack and to maintain soil sustainability. And finally, the collection of rainwater to use for irrigation. Uh, in agriculture uh, field. Due to climate change, there will be uh, in many parts there is frequent uh, uh, irre irreversibility of rainfall and somewhere uh, some parts uh, will be very dry. So there is, they are the adverse. Uh, it cannot meet the optimi optimization of the climatic uh, parameters which uh, cannot uh, meet the proper growth and development of agriculture crops. So uh, these are the uh, some explanation about uh, impact of climate change on agriculture and mitigation measures for livelihood or for farms. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Next, I'd like to literature review. Emiliano, you will introduce analytical results with climate change, especially higher temperature and lower precipitation, please. Uh. Uh, I'm a Neil Santos from Philippines, so uh, based on my discussion paper, uh, climate change po possesses uh, significant tra threats to food security around the world. Agriculture is highly sensitive to both short and long-term variations of climate since weather variability is one of the important factors in agricultural, and land agricultural production and land allocation. Climate change also affects the livelihood of the farmer since agricultural production is highly dependent on weather conditions. In recent years, agri in recent years agricultural production requires significant intensification due to the rapid increase in the world population and the decreasing hectares for land use, irrigated water, and other quality inputs used in pr production aspect. These are the major challenges faced by the farmers and the agriculture sector as a result of climate change. There are several studies contributing to the body of literature which discuss the higher temperatures and lower precipitations are expected to decrease the yields of commercial crops such as maize, rice, soybeans, and wheat. Observably, the effects of the lower yields of, on agriculture productions are increased demand and prices for the commodities, which results in the producers and consum consumers having lower income and lower purchasing power respectively. Aside from agricultural crops, climate change has also affected the choices in producing livestock species. In a study done by CEO and others, uh, the impact of climate change varies in the species and climate, climate scenarios. For example, in hot and dry scenario of climate conditions in South America, the production of beef cattle, dairy cattle, pig, chicken decreases, decrease while sheep production increases. This event means that aside from traditional agricultural crops, livestock pr production is highly susceptible to climate change. Based also on the economic analysis and the impacts of climate change and agriculture rely on the observation of the management practices and profits reflects on farmers' optimal response to the external factors and clima climatic conditions. Also, there are studies predicting that farmers move away from the traditional crops with low yields and substitute new crops that will have better yields in the new climate. This suggested that climate change adaptation predicts smaller damages than what is expected. This also means that the impact of climate change in agriculture sector cannot rely only on how climate change affects the yield of specific crop. But forecasting also the impact of climate change must also capture crop switching 
on or how farmers will change their crop production to maximize profits in the new climate scenarios. In addition, given the worldwide prevalence of agriculture policies intended to adopt the changing climate, the impact of climate change in agriculture in particular country depends on its own international policy. This means it this determines the extent to which local prices and agricultural commodities react to vibrations in local and international food supply. Lastly, agriculture sector is already affect is already experiencing the impact of climate change. And what we can do is adopt and look for the best ways in order to mitigate the, the negative effects and maximize the positive effects of climate change in the agriculture sector. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Yeah, next, yeah, Daya will present his case study in Nepal, please. Uh, thank you so much, Professor Singh, for this opportunity. Uh, hello, everyone. So today's our topic is uh, climate change, and today I'm going to talk about uh, how vulnerable is the developing countries like Nepal uh, to the uh, climate change. So these developing countries like Nepal are more vulnerable to the climate change, and how can the developed countries like, like Korea can uh, help the developing countries to cope up with this uh, climate change. So I'm going to start, uh, I'm ma majorly I'm focused to the uh, issue of Nepal, so how Nepal is more vulnerable to climate change. So talking about Nepal, uh, according to IPCC, uh, that is the Intergovernmental Panel on uh, Climatic Change, uh, Nepal is one of the most vulnerable countries to the impact of the climate change. So it lies uh, within the uh, top 50 countries, top 50 vulnerable countries uh, according to the climate change. So it's mainly due to its uh, geography and its uh, dependency upon the uh, economy on uh, climate sensitive sectors uh, such as agriculture and tourism. We, we majorly, we are uh, dependent upon the agriculture and tourism. Uh, so if I had to point out some of the key factors uh, that makes uh, Nepal more vulnerable to the climate change, then the, the key factors are like its location. Uh, Nepal is uh, in, located in the Himalayan region. So uh, about 80% of the country's land uh, is covered by the mountains and the hills. Uh, so uh, uh, being its, uh, due to its geography, the climate change, uh, including the, it, it changes the rising temperature, changes in precipitation patterns, and due to which the uh, glaciers and the snowpacks, they are melting. Mm -hmm. And this, this can affect in the water availability, food security, and the, the livelihood of the communities that depend on the uh, mountain sources. Uh, similarly, the another factor is the water resource. So Nepal is the uh, source of many major uh, river systems in uh, South Asia including the, Gang, uh, the major rivers like Ganga and Brahmaputra and Indus. So uh, these rivers are very important for the agriculture and hydropower generation and the uh, livelihoods of millions of people are dependent upon, depend upon these uh, resources, water resources. So the climate change, it affects the uh, timing and the amount of the water available in these river systems, uh, which may lead to the increased water stress and food insecurity and conflicts as well. And another factor is the agriculture. Nepal is very much dependent upon agriculture for its economy and uh, it employs about 60% uh, of the population and it contributes one-third of the country's GDP. So being dependent upon the agriculture, the climate change can affect the crop yields and food security uh, and the climate change, due to the climate change there can be the erratic rainfall and the flooding and uh, water logging conditions. So due to all this it, it will affect agriculture and finally it affects the country as a whole. And uh, similarly the other, other factor is the natural disaster. Uh, Nepal is more prone to the uh, different natural disasters like floods, landslides, earthquakes and uh, droughts. So uh, the, the climate change uh, can increase the frequency of uh, frequency of these uh, natural disasters. Uh, and the last one, uh, last but not the least, this is the uh, uh, economic condition of the country and the inequality situation. So uh, Nepal has a significant proportion of population that are living below the poverty lines. 
So talking about the climate change, it will affect the poor people more. Uh, they are more vulnerable. Uh, so uh, the com these communities, uh, there are like this inequality and poverty due to which uh, they are more vulnerable to the climate change issues. So uh, overall, the, the, because of this uh, geographic condition and economy and social conditions, uh, the, the Nepal, Nepal is very much vulnerable to climate change, and it can uh, the, the, this condition can be similar to other developing countries as well. So uh, now talking about how developed countries uh, can help uh, these uh, developing countries to cope up with the climate change. Uh, developed countries like Korea can help in uh, the, the financial support. Uh, the, the support can be in a, a grant or loans or in the form of aid, uh, or they can help in uh, building the infrastructures and promoting uh, clean energy uh, like that. Similarly, they can also help uh, through technology transfer. Uh, the technology and the expertise uh, that the developed countries have, they can share to the uh, developing countries. This technology can be in the reno renewable energy technology and improving irrigation systems and developing early warning systems for the uh, weather events. <coughs> and similarly, uh, they can also be helped by the capacity building. Uh, developed countries can help by providing training and education to the local communities and government and help to build their capacity to manage the climate risk. <coughs> similarly, can also help in the policy development. The policy, uh, policy level uh, development for the uh, implementing policies that address the impacts of the climate change. Uh, this could include the uh, supporting the development of climate change adaptation plans, uh, helping to build effective regulatory frameworks, and supporting the development of climate smart agriculture. So overall, uh, uh, I mean to say that the, the developed countries, they play a key role uh, in helping the developing countries like Nepal uh, to cope up with the impacts of the climate change uh, by providing these financial, technical, and uh, capacity building support. So, thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> and next, we move to mitigation measures. There are two types of mitigation measures. One is farming techniques, the other one is policy strategies. So, SES will cover the farming te techniques, such as climate smart agricultural practices. Please. Okay. Thank you very much. My name is Seth. I'm from Ghana. Um, as we all know, climate changes, um, a drastic change in the temperature and weather conditions over a period of time. And um, it tends to um, affect, it's a cross cutting issue. So, Ghana as a country is no different. And uh, um, when we look at climate change as a whole, you realize that it, it doesn't only really affect Ghana, it affects all countries in the world. So, um, in effect, what we want to look at is the conservative practices. Yeah, yeah. so um, as a means of measure, uh, um, it is looked at that climate change being um, a part of a very important issue is that we would like uh, to promote minimal disturbances to the crop soil in crop diversity. So by maintaining the, uh, the soil cover. So over that period of time, um, it is to help prevent um, so much education is supposed to be provided in that sense to help prevent deterioration that is brought over a period of time. So uh, taking into consideration like uh, a country, Ghana, we had our own share in 1983 where the effect of climate change caused a period of long-term effect on the land which uh, affected the productivity over a period of time. So there was scarcity of food. And in that sense, uh, 
the education, much education should be thrown, is thrown on the greater, um, on the greater uh, decrease in much fertilizer use. So uh, the impact of it is that we, we, because we want to conserve much of the environment, we, uh, much education should be thrown on the fact that uh, developing countries should help all of us to not go so much into fertilizer usage, um, which will in effect too much of it will in effect also cause the 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 more of climate change to happen. So um, in that practice, we 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 much education is thrown on crop rotation, uh, soil cover activities, also uh, the the guiding concept of conservation of agriculture. Uh, like I said, crop rotation is very important. Um, these practices also lay a groundwork for sustainable agricultural practices. And also, uh, low tillage techniques can be promoted as an alternative to traditional tillage, which in effect can reduce uh, climate change by sequestering uh, carbon emission. So some of these things like uh, minimizing of fertilizer usage, nitrogen um, fertilizer usage more will also help in the prevention of the of of uh, climate issues related to affecting productivity in terms of climate change. Yes. Okay, so uh, we also um, look at implementing of a number of inter interventions like um, water smart practices okay water smart practices um, whether uh, whether smart activities so in so doing we improve local institutions we uh, uh, empower them to be responsible for policy making that um, help with 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 all the needed knowledge about climate and uh, smart climate smart agricultural goals in effect increasing the resistance to climate change so on a whole um, what we are advocating is that um, since climate change affect the livelihood of farmers, um, it is very important that we help to create much awareness about the various forms of um, smart agriculture that can aid in that uh, it can help to, in the future, decrease any challenges that may come as a result of the climate uh, change conditions. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, success. So you you focus on what I asked you. <laughs> so you may be a little bit embarrassed. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, next. Uh, Jack and I will pre uh, present seven key policy strategies. My name is Jarkinai Samatu, I'm from Kyrgyzstan. Yes, to continue about speaking up about the um, impact of climate change on agriculture production and mitigation measures for livelihood of the farmers, I'm going to talk about the, some key strategies that can be employed to address this issue. So first we are going to start with enhancing adaptation measures. It's crucial to invest in adaptive practices that have that can help farmers cope with the changing climate. This includes promoting climate resilient crop varieties, implementing efficient irrigation systems, adopting conservation agriculture techniques, and diversifying farming practices. Providing farmers with training, knowledge, and access to climate information can empower them to make informed decisions and adapt their practices accordingly. So, next one is promoting sustainable land and water management. Sustainable land and water management practices such as soil conservation, watershed management and sustainable irrigation are essential for mitigation that affects of climate change. 
This practice helps maintain soil fertility, improve water efficiency and enhance eco ecosystem resilience. Governments and organizations should support farmers in implementing this practice through policies, incentives and capacity building programs. So next one is investing in research and development. Continuous research and development efforts are critical for defining innovative solutions to address climate change in agriculture. This includes developing climate resilient crop varieties, improving water management technologies and exploring new farming techniques. Collaborative research partnerships between universities, research institutions and farmers can drive the development and dissemination of climate smart technologies and practice. I think also this conference is also a good opportunity to speak up about the climate change. So maybe we are doing some a little effort for solving this problem. So, yes, the next one is changing policy frameworks. Governments play a, a pivotal role in creating and enabling environment for climate smart agriculture. This involves developing policies and regulations that incentivize sustainable practices, integrating climate change considerations into agricultural planning and budgeting and providing financial support for farmers to adopt climate resilient technologies. Coordinated efforts among different government sectors such as agriculture, environment and finance are necessary to ensure a holistic approach to addressing climate change impacts. Fostering partnerships and knowledge sharing. Collaboration among various stakeholders including farmers, government agencies, research institutions, non-governmental organizations and international organizations is essential for effective climate change mitigation in agriculture. Sharing knowledge, best practices and experience can facilitate learning and accelerate the adoption of climate smart techniques. Platforms for dialogue and collaboration such as farm cooperatives, farm field schools and community-based organizations can facilitate this knowledge exchange. Supporting financial mechanisms and insurance schemes. Access to finance is crucial for farmers to invest in climate smart technologies and practices. Government and financial institutions should develop tailored financial mechanisms such as low interest loans, grants and insurance schemes to support farmers in mitigation climate change risk. Insurance programs that compensate farmers for climate related losses can provide a safety net and encourage risk management strategies. So by adopting a holistic approach that combines adaptation, mitigation and sustainable practice, we can effectively address the impact of climate change on agricultural production and improve the livelihoods of farmers. This requires a collective effort involving farmers, government, research institutions and society as a whole. Let us work together to create resilient and sustainable agriculture sectors that can withstand the challenges of climate change and ensure food security for present and future generations. Thank you very much. Okay. Let's yeah, David will summarize and conclude this group talk. Okay, thank you, Professor, for this opportunity. Good morning everyone. My name is David Atubira Kumbire and I'm from Ghana. Yes, um just as my colleagues have in fact um, emphatically expressed the impact of climate change in our cultural sector. They have given us more information than we have even received or ever read about. Um, I would like to take us through a brief summary of what has entailed till now and a possible conclusion. So to begin with, climate change is indeed a present concern for the Earth and its inhabitants. It has a devastating effect, especially in the agricultural sector, mostly because our culture sector largely depends on some of the climate variables, such as the precipitation, temperature, sunlight, and the rest. Also, due to all these variables, any change in the climate has a massive impact in the sector. So just as my colleagues have aforementioned, they have been able to talk about the impact of climate change on agriculture. To summarize that a bit, um, the relationship between climate change and our culture is in two folds. Mostly we tend to um, understand the one way where we have the impact of climate change on our culture sector. But the second part where our culture has an, um, a, a reciprocal effect on climate change is usually undertoned. Why do I say that? So due to the activities of farmers, in their farming activities tend to 
increase the release of certain gases into the atmosphere, which increases the onset of climate change. How is that done? For instance, the onset of deforestation due to agricultural practices, the use of um, um, chemical fertilizers, and a couple of other activities tend to increase the emissions of greenhouse gases into the atmosphere, which later increases the climate emissions. Furthermore, apart from this, the other effect or impact of uh, climate change on our culture is the part that we are here as concerned um, scholars to find resolutions to, and that is the direct impact of climate change on our culture sector. So to begin with, um, some of the impacts that climate change has on our culture sector has to do with um, rising sea levels that result in flooding of some of the agricultural lands. So when this happens, it tends to result in salination and effects evenly or consequently resulting in low productivity. Also, um, high precipitation or um, Unpredictable rainfall also has an adverse effect on the agricultural sector in that farmers, mostly in the developing countries, tend to have a certain pattern of cropping time and uh, predictions to go about their agricultural activities. Due to the climate onset, farmers are not able to predict the patterns of rains while they will prepare their lands and seedings and uh, uh, use the water or rainfall to their benefit. So when this happens, farmers tend to um, record low rainfalls, resulting in uh, low yields productivity. Also, temperature also has an adverse effect on the sector in that uh, most crops can withstand temperature up to a certain level. So an adverse or in that serious um, uh, temperatures rising to 37 or more has an adverse effect in that it burns the crop, thereby resulting in what low productivity recorded by most farmers, especially in the developing countries. And yes, as a means to uh, remediating all these adverse effects, um, the FAO in their conference espoused the climate smart agricultural practices. These practices are um, are uh, aimed at addressing three major pillars about climate change. And these pillars are increasing sustainability, increasing adaptation, and reduction in carbon emissions. So the first one, sustainable production in the agricultural sector, has to do with um, policies being targeted at producing climate resilient uh, crops, also providing um, uh, resources and uh, technologies to farmers, equipping them with the knowledge to be able to have sustainable production, thereby increasing their productivity. Secondly, about the reduction in greenhouse emissions. Yes, so just as I've mentioned that the relationship between climate change and our culture is twofold. So apart from sustainably increasing production, there's also that part where farmers are tasked to also reduce the amount of carbon they emit through the agricultural production activities. So this is mostly done through the use of uh, renewable energy sources, unlike the burning food, fossil fuel, which tend to increase the onset of climate change. And uh, adaptation strategies to are equally emphasized through the use of um, um, the weather forecast, which will provide comprehensive information to farmers to go about their farming activities and also diversification of crops is also another means of the, uh, adapting to the adverse onset of climate change and the uh, adoption of new technologies such as um, precision agriculture which uses less water and efficient in giving out output. So all in all, these are some of the remedies that are available to address the adverse or rigorous effect that climate change has on the agricultural sector. So to conclude, as we have given you more information 
about climate change. Now, it's no longer a debate whether climate change exists or not. It is. It's been proven through literature that years is here. Then the impact of climate change on that culture is severe. It's been experienced mostly and um, it's, it's adverse effects. It's majorly felt in the developing countries, mostly due to their inability to um, target or tackle the the effects this poses due to their low resource and doubt nature. So as as is stand now, um, most developing countries now depend on the developed ones to find some lasting solutions to these effects as my colleague has already mentioned. So it's through that that we have been able to give these information. So in an event you find yourself in a country or a place where you can't um, readily tackle these effects on your own, there's always a country or a neighbor who has the resources to help you in tackling some of these activities and the effects of climate change on the sector. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Ooh. All of you, please. Must be very embarrassed when I'm requesting some certain parts of your papers. So, <laughs> but you do a very good job. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Okay, so thank you for taking the time. So we can conclude this little one talk. Thank you. Thank you. This concludes the first discussion. From now on, we will take a 10 minutes break. So the second session will start at 10 a.m.